Hello and welcome back to part two. So we're going to go back to Leah and Mike are back. That's the name of the YouTube video that they put together. Okay. And here we go. Okay. This is actually affixed to the report, which I'll show you the first page in a minute, but okay. let me just explain why it's done this way. Okay. Sit, you can see, Leah, you, you're exactly <laughs> right. Sit alert. Sit alert, situation yeah. alert, everybody. Yep. And this comes from the external security chief, Osa Int, uh, the illustrious uh, Kirsten Catano. Yeah, and so we have, so Kirsten Catano Peterson is an Osa uh, fixture and has been for quite a while. Uh, there's there's Kirsten uh, Peterson, Kirsten Catano Peterson, uh, who has a very cozy relationship with with law enforcement. So Kirsten Catano's name came up in the Danny Masterson trial. She was involved in uh, attempting to prevent Jane Doe One from going to the police. One of the things that she did, she had a meeting with um, Jane Doe One and Danny Masterson. And this took place somewhere between 2003 to 2004. So 2003 was when the rape occurred and 2004 is when Jane Doe One reported to police. So in that time, uh, we know that Kirsten Catano was involved. Kirsten Catano is a fixture in OSA and Kirsten Catano was, uh, her position was under Mike Rinder's position in the OSA network. And as you can see, this is an example of a report that is she is sending and she's copying in Mike Rinder amongst other positions there. And I will detail in another video, future video, more about the relationship between Mike Rinder and Kirsten Catano, how their positions interacted and what the relationship was and included in the OSA documents that are Mike Rinder's own documents are his writings to and about Kirsten Cotano uh, issuing her directions um, on how to handle matters. And we can detail that in another video. So let me show you the next page of this document. I'm a little clumsy at doing this Lily, but you know, Mikey, we'll, we'll make totally it totally okay. Okay, so here we go. This is the actual document. And the idea is that cover sheet can get torn off. And this document, like appearing like this, is what ends up in the files. So what's the purpose of that? So you have no idea who, who wrote this or um, where it was sent to. Okay, so it says around 5.30, Got a call from James Barber stating he was at Parker Center in LA having been arrested on a charge of sodomy and oral sex with a minor that allegedly occurred five years ago with a then 15-year-old WOG girl. WOG, Scientology slang for not, sign, not a Scientologist. Mm -hmm. What did OSA do? And of course, note the president's CC int when she right. hears this, yeah, calls OSA. So the president of CC Int, when she hears this, she calls OSA. That's what he said. Now, Kirsten, Kirsten Catano is the one that is making this report up the lines, reporting it up to the top level, right? And so, and, and CCing in Mike Rinder, and that's why Mike Rinder has this report in his documents. And she's detailing that James Barber has been arrested. She got a call from the Celebrity Center International president named Maria Ferrara. Now this document is from 2006. What we do know is that in 2003, the president of the Celebrity Center International was a woman named Susan Watson. She was Luke she is Luke Watson's mother, um, who is featured pretty heavily in the trial um, of Danny Masterson. Okay. So what is apparent here is that there is a process. Now, if there's anything that I know about the C organization, being as I was born and raised in it, I <laughs> certainly know that there are processes for everything and everything has channels and the channels go up the line and they go down the line. And that includes reporting and requests and um, you know, approvals for things and all, all kinds of 
scenarios. But in this case, you can see that there's a channel there. So the president of Celebrity Center International reports to OSA when there is a situation, alerting to a situation, which is a legal matter or um, a, Scient a Scientology celebrity um, being involved with the law. So there's a clear line there that occurs. And yet Mike Rinder says that he doesn't, he didn't know anything about the victims of Danny Masterson, that he didn't know about Jane Doe 1, even though in 2004, Jane Doe 1 reported to police, which created a legal situation. And prior to that, the Church of Scientology was heavily involved, including Kirsten Catano, in attempting to silence Jane Doe 1. And Mike Rinder was Kirsten Catano's boss. I think that it is safe to believe that there is this, there was the same process in 2003 and 2004 to what appears here in 2006, that the president of the Celebrity Center International would alert OSA International Mike Rinder being the head of OSA International would have been informed about Danny Masterson. This is standard practice in not the, not the police, not the police, not she calls anybody OSA. Okay. call OSA and report this at once. So then the next step is get a lawyer. And in this case, James was connected up with Elliot Abelson and criminal attorney Don Wager. So Elliot Abelson appears here on our board, and I will give you a close up of that at the end of the video. And we're going to learn a bit more about Elliot Abelson and his uh, association and relationship with Mike Rinder. Elliot Abelson was the in-house counsel for Scientology. His mm -hmm. office is on the, or was on the 10th floor of the Hollywood Guarantee Building. Mm -hmm. Elliot Abelson was the main Scientology fixer. Mm -hmm. He was sort of senior to Rick Moxon and handled more delicate matters than Moxon was able to handle okay. because he was actually a real attorney who had had a real law practice. So Kendrick Moxon that he just mentioned there, uh, is also mentioned in the Jane Doe, um, in relation to Jane Doe 1 in the Danny Masterson trial. Uh, he was the one that presented Jane Doe 1 with a non-disclosure agreement. And I believe that took place in 2004. So Kendrick Moxon is here on our board and we will uh, have a look at him close up later on. Mm -hmm. Elliot Abelson was the main Scientology fixer. Mm -hmm. He was sort of senior to Rick Moxon and handled more delicate matters than Moxon was able to handle okay. because he was actually a real attorney who had had a real law practice. But Elliot Abelson was the go-to guy when there were matters that were sensitive mm -hmm. and needed... Um, finesse to wiggle around what would otherwise perhaps be ethical considerations mm -hmm. that lawyers might have about what they did. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here are some photos of Mike Rinder and Elliot Abelson. This was captured, I think, by a German news crew. Um, and this is at the Celebrity Center was that Celebrity Center? Coincidence. Um, yeah, so Mike Rinder and Elliot Abelson. Here is Mike Rinder, and here is Mike Rinder and Elliot Abelson. And here they are as well. And here they are as well. Okay, so that's that one. And then what do we have next? We have this little gem. This video is called Knowledge Report, Mike Rinder on Scientology's use of PIs. This is on Mark Bunker's YouTube channel, and this is Mark Bunker's interview with Mike Rinder. That's a joke. That's just a, that's just a, a, a way of keeping an arm's length um, distancing. I mean, he, he always says, oh, yeah, I'm working for Elliot Abelson. Elliot Abelson's a nobody. I hired Elliot Abelson. He doesn't have any authority to do anything 
anywhere, anyhow, at any time with anybody. He's a name. He is a name that can be used and a buffer. If any so he is a name that can be used and a buffer, a buffer. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to take you back to this report here. It's dated April 4th, 2006. This is the OSA document. This is Mike Rinder's document that he's discussing. And this is actually the OSA document um, as it is in the OSA files. And um, and so I just so that you can see here, WDC OSA is the title of the position that Mike Rinder held in 2006, to the best of my knowledge. Okay, so let's get back to Mike Rinder and Leah Remini. This is privileged. We will arrange for this to be done somewhere other than CC Int. And then you get to the next page. Mm -hmm. And per a session in March 2015, he admitted that he had an out to D, an improper sexual relationship mm -hmm. in New York. Okay, so it says per a session in March 2005, and that he had admitted to an out to D. An out to D is when you do something that is against what would be considered proper in terms of like sexually. And often what would happen in Scientology, because the purpose was to minimize crimes, they would refer to rape or statutory rape, even child sexual abuse as out to D situations and does not identify, you know, or separate consensual acts from criminal acts. Mm -hmm. In another March 2006 session, it came up that in 2001 in New Jersey, he drove a 15 year old wog girl home and kissed her. There is an OW write up he did in January 2004, mm -hmm. where he said he was engaged in uh, improper activities with a high school student. Okay, so an OW write-up is short for overts and withholds write-up, and that's something that Scientologists do to write up their transgressions, anything that they consider wrong or bad, they will write that down. The over is the transgression, and the withhold is withholding that information. So that's if you're hiding something, hiding something that you did. You're told that it's to alleviate the personal consequences of committing a transgression and then withholding it. And what happens is that they keep all these on file for for forever, indefinitely. So as you can see, the extensive history of him doing things with, uh, yeah, committing crimes against underage children, this James Barber, all inside of Scientology's records. From Elliot and Moxon, mm -hmm. if it So this is input from Elliot Abelson and Kendrick Moxon. Both these people are up on my board and I will show them to you at the end. And it's their involvement. They're providing legal advice of how to manage the garnering of information, how to protect the information from being um, ever made public. This interview, where they're planning on now doing a more interview to find out what else they might know, mm -hmm. is conducted by a church minister under ministerial circumstances. This is privileged. We will arrange for this to be done somewhere other than CC Int. Like okay, so that's it for now on the James Barber case. And now I wanted to just take you through some of these OSA people uh, that are on our cork board here and just give you a bit of a close up. Okay, so first you have the Mark Headley OSA chart. And then we have the Hollywood Guarantee Building, which is where OSA was located, as well as the in-house lawyers. That's where they would plan all their devious tricks to silence victims and protect predators of Scientology. And here we have Mike Rinder, the former head of OSA International. Down here, we've got Elliot Abelson, the in-house counsel for Scientology. And we've got Kirsten Catano, who was the external security chief for OSA International, who worked under Mike Rinder. And we've got Kendrick Moxon, who we know is involved in the silencing of Jane Doe 1. 
in the Danny Masterson trial. In 2006, the president of Celebrity Center who was involved in the James Barber case is Maria Ferrara. And then we have, of course, James Barber over here. Um, we've got, in 2003, the president of Celebrity Center was Susan Watson. And, of course, we have Danny Masterson. And so final words is to say that OSA did not only engage in the fair gaming of critics of Scientology, but also engaged in the silencing of victims and the protection of predators. This is the real story of OSA. Thank you everyone again for tuning in and I hope to bring you some more real soon.